Just speak to her, Jeffrey. Jeffrey's had a crush on Jessica for so long, but he just can't muster up the courage to speak to her. He stares at her in class every single day. What do you think happens next? She gets a boyfriend. Jeffrey's so upset he should have just talked to her. Adonis. Adonis understands women just like Pakistan. <laughs> I'm tired of you doing the tax one, bro. Just like Pakistani men and know how to avoid taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Adonis understands women just like Jeffrey understands the female characters on League of Legends. Obsessively. His conversations with women are full of sexual tension, excitement, and interest. I was in army cadets when I was a teenager, and inside, you know, you'd go for like training to train to be in the army when you're like 14 years old. You'd go and like learn how to like do knots and ties and stuff. There was a particular part where we'd be sat almost like a classroom, and the instructor in front of us would be teaching us like the phonetic alphabet A for alpha, B for beta. I couldn't even focus on what he was saying because my eyes were just glued onto the girl that I had a crush on. Bro, she was so fucking cute, bro. I had such a big crush on this girl who was in army cadets with me, and I said nothing to her. Day in and day out, every time like it was time to go to cadets, maybe two, three times a week, I would literally just kind of like stare at her and I would do this, which makes me so fucking cringe now. Instead of saying anything, I would literally be sat there in the classroom, tilting back on my chair and biting my pen lid. I'd be doing this whilst looking at her. <laughs> I'd be staring at this girl like this, bro. And I had no fucking confidence enough to speak to her. I thought this was game. I thought I was like, I was maybe 14 at the time, but I thought this was game, bro. I thought I looked like smooth and like hot as fuck and everything doing this. And eventually there's this big event for cadets where hundreds of us from different groups, different detachments go and like meet up in like this big city. And like, there's like some big compound that's been reserved for us. And it's like this organized thing where there's going to be like a big dance, like a ball at the end that we've all got like suits and dresses for and everything. And I remember one of our instructors, one of like the sort of female sort of more senior girls who was still like, you know, quite young. She randomly just asked me once, like, oh, Hamza, like, would you go to the dance with her? I'm, uh, well, yeah, yeah, of course I would, yeah. <laughs> what happened was that she had, you know, the girl that I like, she had, like, no one else to go with, and, you know, I'm last place, but yeah, it's fine, bro. Like, if she's stuck with me, it's fine. A day into this sort of big event, she just kind of, like, in front of everyone, kind of says that she has a crush on someone else and that she wants to go out with him. And even one of like my friends there as well said, oh, but what, what about Hamza? Like he said, you, you know, you should go out with, you should go with Hamza. And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And I was, I was like, oh no, don't worry about me. Like you should go, you should go with that guy. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Maybe your father or your uncle hasn't told you this just yet, but fortune favors the bold. You can't be shy around women. You need to grab whatever confidence you have, whatever level of courage that you have, and just take action and say something and be honest that you like this girl. Being shy and being, you know, taking your time with it, it makes you just seem less attractive. And I know what you're thinking, and you could probably relate to, you know, my story. That, like, oh no, but you know, it doesn't feel right, and it's not the right time. I'm gonna wait for the right time to say something. But the thing is, when you're like a certain level of guy, when you don't have that much of experience with girls, or you're not that confident, you're always always gonna feel this level of resistance before you're about to like speak to a girl and tell her that you like her. Courage is when you feel that feeling of fear, but you do the thing anyway. You have to understand that you have inside of you this emotion that's telling you like, oh no, but it's gonna be scary if we talk to her. But you can do the action even if you feel this emotion. You don't need to feel absolutely fine to go speak to her. You just need to do the action no matter what you're feeling. Girls are attracted to like courageous, confident guys who even if they're experiencing some kind of negative, fearful emotion, do the hard work anyway. And you might be thinking, but, but, but Hamza, I'm scared of rejection. Well, yeah, of course you are. Rejection is like a totally scary thing, but only really for the first 50 rejections of your life. By now, you watching this, you probably experienced rejection maybe 10 times in your entire life, maybe 20 times. Obviously, like online texting shit, like, you know, some girl that you've never even met before on Tinder or something stops replying to your message. That doesn't count. But like a real rejection of you walking up to a girl, saying something in the sense that you like her, and then her saying, oh, no, sorry, I've got a boy for her. Most young guys have only been rejected like three times, and it hurts so significantly. But the pain of rejection starts up here, and it goes down dramatically dramatically with every single one that you get and I promise you that any of the guys who are slightly older than you who are quite experienced with women and you know who get like quite a lot of girls have been rejected by 10 times as many as you can think. Honestly I may have been rejected by probably close to 300, 400, 500 somewhere around that range in person. In person. And that's not even including like the random times that like some girl on Instagram or Tinder that like doesn't reply to your message. To be good with girls honestly a lot of it is just quantity. It's just a lot of practice. How is it that girls actually want you to talk to them? They just want you 
you to like be honest and upfront with what you actually want from us. So many guys, especially the younger guys, we don't have much confidence. Like you go about it in this like just this pussy kind of way where you just kind of act like you don't really like her for for what for what reason? What gain is there for you to pretend that you don't really like her and that you've got no interest in her? You know, th there's the kind of cool Chad looking guy who doesn't act but just isn't really that interested in her and that's kind of attractive. But when it's inauthentic, when you are actually obsessively thinking about this girl and you try and act too cool and like pretend like, oh, I'm not going to speak to her. Oh, like I'm going to wait till the right time. It's not attractive, bro. And the reason why we do that, the reason why we don't go and speak to these girls is because we're just scared of rejection because we're scared of like the bad thing that could happen because we feel quite fearful. You can't be scared of rejection because regret hurts more than rejection. Not speaking to that girl that you randomly see that one time that you could have cold approached hurts more than you just going up to speak to her and her just saying, oh, sorry, I've got a boyfriend. So what should you actually say when you're next to a girl? That you probably already know the advice. Oh, you should ask questions and you should be interested in them. That advice is like really basic. And the guys who follow it end up feeling like they're in an interview with the girl. And you probably felt this too. You've probably felt that you've been in this one-sided conversation where you're asking her questions and she's answering and it just feels like an interview. Maybe she's asking you the question out of like politeness. You say like, oh, what's your favorite type of music? And she says, oh yeah, like drum and bass. What's your favorite type of music? Yeah, oh, well, I really like 90s bro. And the conversation, you know for a fact, is not the kind of one that she's having with Chad. So what conversation are these girls actually having which sexually excites them and it's definitely not the kind of one that you're having which just feels like an interview. This is exactly what you do. Instead of asking questions and making your conversation with her kind of like an interview, you instead tease her. Teasing a girl is far, far more enjoyable than going through like this dry, boring ass interview questions of like, what kind of music do you like? You tease her in almost like a slightly mocking tone with like a slight insult. You don't want to just tease her by saying, oh yeah, you're a fat bitch or <laughs> some shit. But you want to tease her in a way that's quite clearly like not true. So it's not going to hurt her feelings. For example, with my girl now that I'm dating, for our first date, we sat in a cafe together and we both had like a hot drink and we were in Thailand, right? So we met in Thailand. She's wearing like this beautiful black dress and this one cafe was pretty warm. So she started to sweat as you know, it's normal to do in Thailand. And I just started making fun of her for sweating. I was like, oh, you did squats in the in the bathroom like to warm up before he comes speaking to me and stuff. And you know, she had like a bit of sweat and wiping it off her and saying, oh, you're so sweaty. You know, just teasing around with that. That made our conversation flow so well to the point that I was leaving Thailand that same day, by the way. That was my last day on Thailand. I literally just had like a last minute date with this girl. It was so good. She was meant to stay in Thailand with her brother for like months in the future. We had such a good time together on that date that she literally left her travels early, came back to the UK to be with me. So I made such a great impression on that first date because I focused entirely on this kind of teasing, lighthearted vibe, this sexual energy before getting into the more sort of serious conversation. Oh, fuck me. Holy shit, bro. When I was in university, I was a fuck boy, right? I was good at sleeping with girls from like Tinder and clubs and everything. And me and my one friend, Levi, we went out onto this club night. Inside the club, you know, we kissed girls and stuff, but none of the girls like were coming out with us. But we leave the club, we're about to go home, we've got an Uber, and we see these two like cute looking, like bro, sexy looking girls, like hot looking girls. It was very interesting because the two girls we saw were like exactly our type. So we go up and start spitting game to these girls and we start telling them, oh, you know, come into our Uber, come back to our place and everything. We will have like music. We got drinks and everything. And the girls are waiting it up. And they're, yeah, go on. And the girls are vibing us, right? So we bring both girls back to our apartments and I start kissing my girl. So I'm with a black haired girl and I bring her into my room. And out of nowhere, bro, the other girl walks in, just kind of like not interested. She walks in, stops me and my girl and kind of tells my girl, come on, look, we're going. I'm like, what the fuck? So what, you know, like, why is my friend not held it down? Like, come on, bro, just take care of your girl for like another five minutes, bro. All I needed was five minutes, bro. He sat there on his bed, just looking defeated. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? All you have to do is just like, keep her busy. Like, if you're not gonna fuck her, fine. But like, I was about to, bro, what the fuck? Like, why is your girl coming to my room and interrupting me and taking her away? And they just went home now. And he just looks at me, he's like, Oh, bro, I've got no fucking game. Like, he usually is kind of a smooth guy, but this is literally what happened. This guy brings his girl into his room and they sit there with like the bright light on, no music playing or anything. They just sat there at the edge of his bed and he's just asking her interview questions. So like, uh, what kind of music do you like? <laughs> Oh man, so his girl just got bored with the conversation, literally stood up, left him, came inside my room, just said, yeah, come on, we're, we're leaving. You can't be asking girls these boring ass questions. I know that sort of conventional advice tells you that you should take an interest in the girl and you should ask her about her hobbies. Bro, girls don't want to speak about their hobbies. That's boring as fuck. They want you to tease them to have like a little bit of playful banter to like play wrestle with each other. They want you to speak about like your work, which you're extremely passionate and ambitious about. Do you want to know one of the single conversations that I've had, which has increased a girl's attraction to me to the sky limit is with this girl. When I told her about my plans for YouTube with my leadership of this movement, and I looked her in the eyes and said that I'm going to the top. Do you want to join me? 
Imagine how fucking interesting, how emotional that makes a woman feel when you speak to her in this certain way. Where you don't just ask these little, like, you know, silly questions like, oh, did you do the homework today? What's your music type? Oh, like, just this, like, little weak ass beta male soy boy <laughs> kind of, like, conversations. And instead, you speak to her like a man. And a man either speaks to a woman with, like, so much ambition and tells her, like, yes, like, I'm gonna make it. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be so successful. Or he speaks to her like he's almost, like, playing around with her and he's just kind of, like, laughing around with her. He's teasing her and stuff. He doesn't take her too seriously. Honestly, most of the conversations that I have with my girl. It's just me just teasing her. And that's like, I see her so bubbly, so like goofy, so like laughing with me. I'm like pushing her onto the bed and everything. And they like that stuff. They don't want to be bored, sat down next to a guy who's saying, oh, uh, what kind of music do you like? Scroll down right now and click on the subscribe button and you'll see more videos like this. Also click and watch this video right now. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.